The continent of Africa has one of the largest population growth rates globally. It is known historically for civil war, famine, and poverty. Ghana is located in western Africa on the Atlantic coast, with Togo bordering to its east, Cote d'Ivoire on its west, and Burkina Faso on the north. It was one of the first African countries to gain its independence in 1957, and has a history of coups, corruption, and food shortages. However, since the 1990s, Ghana has developed into a stable democracy. The World Bank now ranks Ghana as one of the top three African countries to support freedom of speech and the press. Before COVID, the stability of the government allowed Ghana to enjoy an annual GDP increase of 7%, but it is still considered a developing country. Lake Volta, one of the largest artificial lakes in the world, is in the central region of Ghana, but the people of Ghana still struggle to provide safe water for their families. Water for Ghana reported that 80% of all diseases in the country is a result of unsafe water. The International Futures Model provided most of the trend analysis and projections for this video, and it is hosted by the Frederick S. Party Center for International Futures. The model integrates data provided by 182 countries and enables us to think about the different potential global futures. This look at Ghana relies on the base case which is computer-aided mathematical projections based on trends in the data. The base case does not incorporate any outside interventions. This is what Ghana could look like if we do nothing different. The model is considered a living tool that is constantly evolving. It has seen seven evolutions from its start in 1980, with the eighth currently in progress. Some of the data in the model is updated dynamically, while other data updates are provided periodically. No other system collects, integrates, and presents this type of data. A causal loop diagram is a tool that we use to understand complex systems and how components interact. Using the IFS model to evaluate the trends in Ghana, we see the following system at work. The causal loop diagram illustrates the reinforcing nature of population growth, urbanization, and infrastructure development to increase water access. It also demonstrates how the increase in population decreases water access per capita and requires the government to invest more in urban infrastructure. Additionally, the increase in water access increases the people's education opportunities, which will reduce the overall poverty of the country. The increase in safe water infrastructure results from population growth and urbanization. As the government invests in the safe water infrastructure in the cities, more people are moving into the cities, reducing water access and requiring additional infrastructure to accommodate the people. Finally, suppose we want to impact the lives of people in Ghana. In that case, the system interactions require increased access to water to improve education opportunities and decrease poverty. When people do not spend so much time finding water, they can do other things to better their lives. The first component of the Ghana water crisis diagram is the population. If the current trends continue, Ghana's population will increase from 30 million to more than 50 million by 2050. In this time frame, the population of Ghana is projected to almost double. Each of these individuals will need access to safe water to grow and develop to their full potential. As the population in Ghana increases, water demand will also increase. Ghana is in a period of extreme urbanization. The growing population is choosing to live in the urban cities instead of in the rural areas. As depicted in the blue on the graph, the rural population will only grow slightly between now and 2050 and will remain under 15 million people. Whereas the urban population illustrated in green is projected to increase rapidly. The urban population growth accounts for Ghana's high population growth rate, depicted in red. Urbanization will increase the demand for water in the cities and require the government to develop the infrastructure to support the growing cities. In this chart, the demand for water for industrial use is in blue and agricultural use in red. There is no projected growth in water demand for these uses, and a lack of infrastructure is likely why. According to U.S. aid, the groundwater sources, aquifers, do not produce water at a high enough rate for anything beyond domestic use, requiring water infrastructure to bring water from Lake Volta to other parts of the country for either irrigation or other industrial uses. Most of the water demand comes from increased municipal water requirements. 
Here again, the demand rises as the urban population increases. The next element in the system is the infrastructure. According to the World Health Organization, in 2020, 25% of the rural population and 4% of the urban population did not have a safe water source. Urbanization will continue to increase the demand for infrastructure and the government's necessity to build the infrastructure to support the growing cities. The increase in infrastructure will in turn reinforce the urbanization of Ghana. The diagram illustrates the percentage of people in Ghana based on their access to water. Currently, most people have access to improved sources such as well. This is depicted in blue. By 2035, it is projected that a transition will occur and more people will receive their water from a pipe network, shown in red. However, even out to 2050, 35% of the population will still rely on the improved access and 5% will use unimproved access to water. Water access is a critical issue in the Ghana water crisis. Infrastructure improvements will increase the population's access to water, but it will also increase the demand for water. The access to water in the cities will draw more people to them and increase the population in the urban environments. The increase in population, especially in the urban areas, will serve as a balancing effect and decrease the overall access to water. The surface water available to the population does not support their long-term health and is not abundant enough in most areas to sustain an entire village. The IFS model projects through 2050 an increase in urbanization that matches the increase in safe water infrastructure, leaving very little projected growth in the infrastructure to the rural areas of Ghana. The demand for water in the urban areas will continue to grow with urbanization, and the country will continue to prioritize investment into the metropolitan area infrastructure. Still, the people in the rural area will continue to suffer from poor access to safe water, which could increase the rate at which they move into the urban areas. An effort needs to be made in building safe water infrastructure in the rural areas to enable their education and economic development. According to the Safe Water Network, Ghana has invested nearly $500 million into developing the infrastructure in the past 20 years. Despite this effort, many people still lack access to safe water. Safe water estimated that 29% of hand pumps in non-urban areas are broken, and 49% only partially function. These pumping stations are not maintained because the local population does not have the training or capacity to maintain the wells. The government's focus is infrastructure development for the urban areas, but the rural area also needs development because this is the water that comes from the wells. It is better than surface water, but is still contaminated and few people in the United States would choose to drink it if they had a choice. The issue with relying on well water access for a large portion of the population is the maintenance of the systems. Wells that supply water to a village do not have periodic maintenance, and in most villages there is no one with the tools to repair parts or the knowledge necessary to repair them. When the village well is broken, those people must walk for miles to find another source or rely on surface water for their needs. Surface water is often contaminated with human and animal waste. A working well provides a place for people to come and pump water for their daily cooking, cleaning, and agricultural needs. The current trajectory for Ghana will create a land of haves and have-nots. The urban areas will have the infrastructure to provide safe water access to many people in the cities, but the rural areas will still suffer from a lack of safe water access. With improved access to water and eventually assured access through electric pumps, the population could focus on more than just surviving and shift to increasing their education. Almost three-fourths of the population of Ghana complete their primary education, and as urbanization increases, this percentage will increase. However, in the rural areas where the focus is still on finding water to survive, education is often neglected. Increasing the safe water access to the rural village will allow children like these to receive an education. Education can help reduce the poverty rate in Ghana. The percentage of people in Ghana over the age of 15 living in extreme poverty will decrease steadily from now until 2050. One of the third order effects of increasing access to water appears to be a decrease in extreme poverty. As the people require less time to seek water sources, they can improve their education and provide better for themselves. This trend highlights the importance of developing the safe water infrastructure in urban areas and how critical it is to establish safe water access in rural villages. While the projection does show a continual decline in extreme poverty through 2050, 2% of 50 million people is still a million people in extreme poverty. 
Free time, enabled by reliable access to safe water, will increase educational opportunities. An educated population will potentially allow the village to have someone skilled at maintaining the wells and potentially increase the industry opportunities beyond making charcoal for use in the cities. The growth and development of Ghana hinges on the people's ability to access safe water for their needs. If you are interested in learning more about the Ghana water crisis or the International Futures Model, here are some resources to get you started.